Good day, good day. My name is Andrew Sanford. Um, I am the security and team lead at RainFocus. Um, and today we're going to talk about Europe's privacy law, GDPR, or the General Data Protection Regulation. A uh, quick note, uh, this presentation and any opinions in it are my own. This presentation is not endorsed or created by RainFocus. Uh, this is my own content, um, but I just put my title of who I am so you can get a better understanding of, of who I am. So the objectives of today's training um, or, or tutorial are to enable you to meaningfully contribute to GDPR and any privacy related conversations uh, by providing an overview of this regulation, talking about its impacts and implications, and then briefly reviewing the, the future of privacy laws um, because there are more of them and there are more coming. And so we'll just briefly talk about that. Um, and then we'll talk about how this impacts you, both from the perspective of an individual, uh, as well as somebody who works for an organization. Um, if you're in person, we'll have a Q&A at the end, um, and feel free to ask questions along the way. Um, but if you're watching this recording, uh, please leave comments in the video, and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Um, I, I usually respond within 24 hours of seeing a notification. For some reason, notifications on YouTube don't come in for like a few weeks, I found. Maybe I don't have settings set up right or something, but um, anyways, I will answer your questions if you have any, so feel free to leave them. Um, the other thing to note is, um, like with anything that stems from, I mean, it's regulation, so there's politics involved. I'm not going to express um, my personal opinions on, on the topics that we discussed today, um, its origins, how it impacts individuals and organizations and so on. Um, the goal here today is really talk about objectively what this is, why it came to be, how, what its impact is. Um, and so just know it's totally fine if you want to disagree with something. Um, but for the purposes of this training, we're just going to stick to, um, to it being objective. Now, a quick note on GDPR. It is extremely complex. Um, it is very well written. Um, I have... Um, read um, each line of GDPR um, and various European and US regulations. Um, while it is well written and it's generally clear to understand, um, it is it is pretty complex. And this is in part because it's principles based, um, it's nuanced, and it has exceptions. One, one key difference between American and European regulations, generally speaking, is that American standards tend to be more prescriptive. Um, they'll tell you that you need to do X, Y, and Z, and you have to follow those to um, a T. Oh, that rhymed. That's cool. Um, and then, uh, but European standards tend to be more principles-based. Um, this enables organizations to adapt them to their situation, their environment, um, and, uh, and that enables them to more effectively achieve the, the ultimate goals that, that the regulations set out to be. To, um, to the goals of the regulation set out to achieve. Now, one drawback of this, though, is that um, it does create complexity, um, and you do have to analyze and figure out how it applies to your organization. Um, so, if you have any, so if you're planning on um, implementing GDPR at your company, be sure to consult with um, with both legal counsel as well as um, appropriate experts. On this regulation um, to help you understand how it applies to your organization um, and what your organization needs to do. So in today's overview we're going to talk about GDPR's origins, its main objectives, some important terms that are needed that you need to know in order to understand this regulation, um, its scope, so where it applies, who it applies to, uh, the rules, and then how it's enforced. So GDPR started to be drafted in, in 2012 when European um, uh, members of parliament, of the European, the European parliament, recognized that um, their um, current security laws at the time weren't adequately addressing the risks that had, had evolved, um, had, had come up. Um, I believe the last law was drafted in, in the late 90s. Um, however, um, People really got behind this law in Europe after Edward Snowden leaked um, documents in 2013. If you're unfamiliar with Edward Snowden, he um, 
In 2013, he was working for the NSA, which is a U.S. government intelligence agency, and um, and he decided that there were a number of things that he uh, he didn't like and he viewed as unconstitutional um, and and potentially immoral, and so and he also didn't think that the the government's whistleblower program would would adequately address um, the issues that he saw. And as a result, he decided to um, exfiltrate. Um, he stole, he took a bunch of uh, sensitive documents and gave them to journalists in 2013. Um, and then there were, were a series of reports over the following years um, since then that have that, that revealed um, what the NSA was doing, how it was collecting data on individuals. Um, and so, um, before Snowden leaked these documents, it's, it's important to know that Europeans had already been subject to authoritarian government surveillance and had seen the effects of that in their lives. And so privacy concerns are, are already a, a really big topic and already really important to Europeans, generally speaking. However, notwithstanding that, uh, tech companies had lobbied and, and really succe succeeded in, in watering down the legislation um, and making its requirements weaker. Now, after Snowden, um, Europeans were outraged that primarily American tech companies were sharing their PII, some of it really sensitive with the US government. Um, and as a result of this, this outrage, um, there was a loss of trust in tech companies and momentum gained and support gained for this uh, the drafted legislation and pretty much tech lobbyists were ignored and the legislation became um, much, much stronger and turned into what it is today. So um, the legislation now known as GDPR was passed in uh, 2016 and um, it went into effect in early 2018. So now we're gonna dive into uh, GDPR and what it is. So the main objectives of GDPR are to formalize privacy as a fundamental human right, uh, give people control over their PII and designate organizations as stewards rather than owners of PII. Now, a steward is a person or entity who um, is has a responsibility to care, watch over, um, look after something. Um, in this case, it's, it's personal data. <clears throat> this is a, a change from in the past, where traditionally companies have viewed um, all the data they have as, as their own asset, and they could <clears throat> control it and kind of do whatever they wanted with it. Um, under GDPR, it changed it so that um, organizations have to care for and protect the data um, and recognize that any PII is, is not theirs, it's an individual's. And so if an individual comes and says, hey, I want my data to be deleted from your systems, the organization has to delete it from their systems. Um, and then the last thing that it, it aims to do is, is make sure that organizations respect individuals' privacy rights. Uh, and it, this is primarily done through um, threat of potentially large fines. And, and we'll talk about those um, more later on. So in, in order to understand GDPR, uh, there are some terms that, that you have to know and understand. Um, the first is the European Economic Area, or EEA. Um, the second is PII, or Personal Information, uh, Processing, Controller, and then lastly, Processor. So the European Economic Area is uh, comprised of the EU, which on this map is in blue, um, and then Iceland, Norway, and Liechtenstein, which are in green. Uh, Liechtenstein is a, a, is a tiny country that borders Switzerland, and it's on the east side of Switzerland. To put it in perspective, um, the EEA has a population of over 515 million people. Uh, its land mass is about half the size of that of the U.S. Um, my, and then um, its economy is roughly the same size as the U.S. is. So this, so GDPR, because it applies to such an influential um, market, um, it affects most organizations, well, not, maybe not most, but a lot of organizations around the world. The next definition is personal information, or um, PII. Um, 
Under GDPR, PII is termed as any type of data that can identify an individual, whether directly or um, indirectly through like a bunch of small pieces of data that can reasonably say that Alice, you know, this person is Alice or this person is Bob. So, um, for example, it could be a first name and last name, or it could be a group of data like, you know, somebody's location and their IP address. Um, it also includes any information that you learn about an individual through analysis. So, for example, Facebook and, and Google create or enable marketing companies to create um, systems that, that can profile individuals. And so, um, through these analyses, companies can specifically target people who are highly likely to want to buy black shoes or people who want to buy um, or, or some company may launch a product and they want to target people who are likely and highly likely to, to buy their product. Um, that type of information um, is also considered PII under GDPR. So if you're an organization that not just collects but also does analyses, does analysis on individuals, know that the results of that analysis also count as PII and are subject to the same requirements. Um, however, some PII cannot be processed um, unless there's explicit consent given. Now, um, GDPR requires consent. Um, that's why you have a lot of like cookie notices pop up on a website, so it applies far beyond cookies. Um, but these types of PII require um, very, very specific consent. Um, and so if you're gonna process any types of these PII, um, make sure that you are talking to your legal counsel um, and appropriate experts on this. Um, otherwise you could find yourself in uh, a heap of trouble from European authorities. So the data that cannot be processed without explicit consent are biometric data, genetic data, health info, um, political opinions, racial or ethnic origins, um, individuals' religious or philosophical beliefs, sex life, sexual orientation, as well as trade union membership. The next term we're going to talk about is, is processing. And processing is any interaction with PII. Uh, and so here are some examples. Um, you, if you adapt data, if you collect PII, if you delete it or erase it, if you publish it, um, organize it, record it, store it, um, put access controls around it, uh, you use it. Basically, any interaction with PII, you're processing it. Um, so this is something to, to be aware of. Um, now, there are two ways that GDPR classifies organizations. Um, if you are in the financial or audit financial audit world, um, throw any, I, I've worked with um, individuals in these situations, um, just throw any preconceived notions you have about these terms out, out the window because they don't apply to GDPR. The first one is controller, and this is an organization that decides how PII is to be used. And the second is a processor. Um, so this is the organization that actually does the processing of the PII. Um, under the direction of the controller. It's important to note that an entity can be both a controller and processor. Um, generally speaking, if you are a controller, um, you are almost always a processor, um, unless maybe you're a consulting firm that says like, yeah, this is what you could do with these types of data. Um, however, if you're a processor, um, you may or may not be a controller. Um, so there are some organizations that, um, like, so if you're a vendor or, or you help other organizations, like, send out emails or, um, or you just do any type of data processing on behalf of another company, um, you're, you're going to be subject to, potentially subject to GDPR. Um, so if you have any questions on these terms, um, feel free to ask, um, and, um, in the recording, just um, leave, leave your questions in the comments.